So it's another week, and instead of going home, I was able to pick up an extra week of work. They flew me down to Florida, and I'm on a, one of our 4200s. And I thought to myself, hey, a lot of people like the uh, video I did of the engine room tour on the 3000s, so why don't I bring you down and show you what the 4200s look like. Basically, it's the same engines, but with four more cylinders on them, that sort of thing. I'll show you around. And you'll see me wearing headphones because I can't believe how many people freaked out about thinking that I wasn't wearing headphones. I, in the other video that I did, I went down, the generators were on, and as I told you before, it's noisy because the generators are running. Um, I had foam inserts in, but everybody freaked out and said, oh my god, I should lose my job and all this sort of stuff. And uh, I really appreciate your concern. Thank you so much. So this time I will put the headphones on so you all can see that and not worry. But once again, let me remind you, I'm going down into the engine room of a boat with the generators running, and it's going to get noisy. So uh, we'll see how it goes. All right, see ya. So we go into the fiddly. You can see I have my headphones on. Maybe you can hear me a little better now. Anyway, we go down, and if you'll notice, it looks very similar, just a little bit bigger than the 3000s. There's the fuel manifold. There's the tunnel with the two day danks on either side going up to the four peak. Electrical panel. And we come back to the 3516. Very similar to our engines, just uh, four more cylinders on it. You'll notice we don't have the twin disc reverse gear that we do have on the 3000. This is a German reverse gear called Rhein Jess or something like that. Anyway, they have a different um, shaft brake system where it's not the brake pads on a big rotor, but they brake it. You can see that little round thing right there. Oh, it's pretty big anyway. That round thing is actually the shaft brake, and it's done hydraulically on the inside of the of the reverse gear. Came up by our generators, and here's the other 3516 on the starboard side. See, looking straight back, there is the big, massive tow winch engine, much stronger than the ones we have on our boats, and you'll see why at the end of the video I show you their big, awesome winch. But anyway, the shaft's bigger. Everything's bigger on these things. The wheels are much bigger and they use quart nozzles. If anyone's interested in what quart nozzles is, uh, are, <laughs> write to me in the comments and I'll put you off to one of our videos, uh, another video that I show with the boat out of water. But here's the outboard side of the starboard engine. You can see uh, eight cylinders on this side, eight cylinders on that side. Set up very similar. Here's our Kadon system. This, this right here is where we polish the fuel. So in other words, we can, in not when we move fuel around, while we're moving it, we take the opportunity to, cl to clean it as well. And then uh, the fuel manifold, very similar to uh, the 3000s, but just bigger tankage. This is something that's locked out right here. This is a water oil separator for the bilge, but uh, reg that was put on before regulations changed, and then regulations changed, we have to lock it out because we don't put anything overboard anymore. But anyway, that's All that. Right. So another cool thing the 4200s do, because they do a lot of wire work, they have a much more substantial winch setup than we have on our 3000s that usually do, do just bunker work. So right here we have an intercon double drum winch. As you can see, I'm 510, and you can see they're pretty big. It's the size of the wire. And uh, I think they have like 22, 2400, something like that. Maybe 2600 feet of wire on each one. I'm not, not exactly sure on this boat. It's not my boat. You can see the size of the shackles that they use. I mean, they're, it's substantial stuff. This right here is something that we call a safety chain. I'll explain that in a little. But this is the part that I really miss when I move from a 4200 over to a 3000. I miss this. We call this, for reasons I don't know, and if you, if any old salty mariner out there knows the reason for this. I'd love you to tell me in the comments. We call this, we refer to this as the suitcase drum. You know, the wire drum and the suitcase drum. And we don't 
I, I don't really know why. I don't know the history behind that. So if you know why, let me know. But anyway, we call that the suitcase drum. What's nice about having that, there's a wire underneath it, and this is all synthetic line on top. But what's nice about this is when you do, when you re go to recover the bridle, you know, when, when you're making up on a tow, you'll have to pull the heavy bridle over, and that might weigh as much as a ton or so. This thing pulls it right up. And even when you're doing things like... Uh, just tying up to the dock you put up a stern line and man this winch is so strong it can pull this boat right out of water they're incredible you saw the six-cylinder John Deere that ran the thing down below it's an awesome winches I think they cost an incredible an insane amount of money but uh god do I love them they're really fast very reliable I've had all, all kinds of good luck with them but anyway I just wanted to walk around and show you what a real winch looks like because Lord knows on my boat I just have this little teeny winch that uh it's very good for what we do but it doesn't compare to uh what a real proper tow winch does and that's what this does here oh yeah so uh the safety chain when it's when it's really nasty out the wire will go over let me show you over here see these these right here are the donuts and you only need one but we have two so one will go on one side one will go on the other and when the wire's coming over the side it comes over and picks up a donut and then it goes up here and this keeps the wire from chafing on the back of the boat and some people don't understand why we do that the reason why the they, they have a winch more towards the center of the boat or ahead of the rudders at any rate is that if it's behind the rudders it's really hard to turn you can turn but nothing really happens so the further you get towards the center of the boat the more the boat can turn and actually start pulling the barge in another direction so if you have this big heavy wire over here stretched all the way out to a barge that might be 1200 1500 feet behind you it's going to go over the stern rail and the metal to metal is going to chafe on the wire and that's something we really don't want to do so we have this thing and you and they're they're many people that don't use Texas bars and they use chafing gear and I've worked on boats that did that and that's fine it's just another way of handling the same situation but as far as in my book I love a Texas bar the wire comes up on here and it goes and from from the winch over here goes over the top of here and right over the back of the stern and what's nice about that is that though it moves it does everything it needs to do in the event that you're in really really heavy weather and especially not so much on the side but if, if you're in a following sea sometimes a head sea too but a following sea see if I can get that Sun out of there the boat is coming up and down going up and down like this so as that happens the wire sometimes can come off of here and actually want to go up and and pop out of you know like if the barge is up if the barge is coming off a wave and the tug is going up a wave the two can be enough so that the wire will come out of the donut so that's where we use what we call the safety chain and that's something like this where it clips onto one side of the wire right here goes around the donut to hold it in place and clips on the other side and what happens is the the the, the when it is that in that situation it goes up and it lifts on the lower part of the donut to keep everything where it's supposed to be anyway hope that makes sense and uh, just to I figured I'd take the opportunity to show you a, what a 4200 does alright see ya